waiting for all of you to join so that we can together learn it. Spurgeon said, the grateful retrospect, the grateful retrospect. Uh, David is looking at a very trouble, troublesome period of his life and he's retrospecting with gratefulness. And that's what Spurgeon said. And uh, it's, it's indeed wonderful to know that, uh, you know, when we think about our past and when we see how God has saved us from, from our uh, distractions and disturbances and from prospective attacks of the enemy, we need to be grateful and thankful to the Lord. So I'm looking from uh, NIV today and uh, Psalm 18 and the uh, heading says uh, for the director of music of David, the servant of the Lord, he sang to the Lord the words of the song when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul, he said. So the background is uh, when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies, starting from you know, David's life was filled with enemies. Even his brothers became enemies to him. Uh, that's the image of Jesus in one way. Uh, because when David was sent to the uh, you know, battleground by his father, the elder brother ridiculed him, mocked him. Uh, and uh, yet, though he was not accepted, uh, David fought Goliath in the same way Jesus fought that Goliath of sin. So David stands as an image of uh, the Lord Jesus, of course. And he's from the tribe, he is from the Davidic clan, and he is called, uh, you know, the branch of Jesse and the uh, root of uh, David, and all those things. So uh, David uh, is thinking about God's faithfulness, and uh, uh, he's looking at David's life and uh, uh, David is looking at the past. He's looking at how Saul uh, came behind him. Saul was an authority. It's very dangerous when people in authority come behind us, when they are kings, especially when the kings, king of a land is coming against us. Uh, it's often like that, uh, especially when a man of God goes and whenever, whenever you are in a, in a land which is having uh, difficult and different customs and traditions, when you know the Lord, there is a lot of enemies camp which is set to target you. But it's wonderful to know that when we have this God on our side, no enemy can come against us. Amen. So when David is looking tank with gratefulness, He's writing this psalm. So we have to go a quick, because it's 50 verses. All right, let's go. March on. Okay, so Psalm 18, verse 1. I love you, Lord. My, I, will love, I love you, Lord, my strength. Well, uh, before that, I want to tell you that this is the same. It is, it is said in 2 Samuel 22. 2 Samuel 22 also, we see the same psalm being repeated. So when Bible says something double, <coughs> it's very important that we give importance to this. So Psalm 18 is one one classic psalm which we have to always keep remembering. So I love you Lord my strength. So he expresses, he starts this psalm with an expression of love. We need to, uh, you know, our song should be of love to the Lord. Many songs of love just connects us instantly to heavens. I love you Lord and I lift my voice. All those songs. Lord, I love you, I love you. So loving God should be a very important part of our Christian life. Loving God. When we love God, we will have uh, His love will come upon us. So it's very important that we love the Lord. Then he talks about the Lord. Uh, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. So he's... Telling it all, he's telling he's my fortress, he's my rock, he's my deliverer, he's my rock, uh, refuge, shield, horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Uh, so, in fact, he's telling Jesus is his strength, God is his strength. If you have God as your strength, 
there's nothing beautiful than that and then uh, he's after he's uh, looking at the Lord uh, his characters he's going to his uh, he's mentioning his situations I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise and I have been saved from my enemies the cords of death entangled me the torrents of destruction overwhelmed me the cords of the grave coiled around me the snares of death confronted me so it's a, a lot of uh, you know what you say the uh, he's looking at uh, he's he he faced death face to face that's what he's telling I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise I've been saved from my enemies cords of death entangled me torrents of destruction overwhelmed me Cords the grave coil around me, the snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help from his temple. He heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. So in that situation, in that situation of real, uh, you know, facing death face to face, uh, he's crying to God for help. And, uh, and, and that's, that's really wonder it's wonderful to know that you know when you are in distress uh, there is a temple in heaven well there is a heavenly temple whatever we see the tabernacle was an image of the heavenly temple uh, definitely there will be an outer court and, uh, uh, and and the holy place most holy place and uh, in the planet heaven there will be, there is a temple and Psalm, uh, psalmist get the revelation of that temple and reason from his temple he heard my cry so when we pray the temple from his temple uh, you know uh, from his temple he heard my voice so my cry came before him into his ears and when it when it reaches his ears what what happens the earth trembled and quaked and the foundations of the mountain shook they trembled because he was angry See, when, when there is injustice against you, don't think that God will sit silent. There are some times, you know, when really our enemies can, can, can trigger, <laughs> trigger the power of God. And look at what's happening. The earth trembled and quaked. Foundations of the mountain shook. They trembled because he was angry. Smoke rose from his nostrils. Consuming fire came from his mouth. My goodness. Burning coals blazed out of it. He parted the heavens and came down. Dark heavens were under his feet. He mounted the cherubim and flew. He soared on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering, his canopy around him. The dark rain clouds the sky. Out of the brightness of his presence, clouds advanced with hailstones and bolts of lightning. The Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded. Then in verse 14, he says, he shot, shot his arrows and scattered the enemy with great bolts of lightning he routed them the valleys of the sea were exposed and the foundations of the earth laid bare at your rebuke lord at the blast of breath from your nostrils so in response to david's prayer he's getting an image of what god is doing he 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 it, it's just powerful you just need to read that again and again you know the things that go behind a prayer, it's powerful. God shakes the heavens. He rides down to help you with his majesty, with his glory. And when David saw the lightning, he said with his lightning, he routed the enemy. Hallelujah. What a good God we serve. You know, which, which, which enemy of you can face the lightning of our God? Nobody can do that. Hallelujah. So this is also one uh, image of what happened in between Genesis 1 verse 1 and 1 verse 2. Uh, in the beginning God created the earth. In the beginning God created heaven and the earth. The earth was formless and void. And there is something called as the gap theory that people understand that came between what happened in between. So it was almost like this. What happened uh, in between was of the similar thing he thundered from heaven when lucifer was lifted uh, when the Lu when lucifer was judged uh, the lord did the same he he shot his arrows and scattered the enemy great bolts of lightning routed them the valleys of the sea were exposed and the foundation of the earth laid bare and that's when you know and, uh, that's how the earth became void and uh, formless and void so a small image of what uh, 
uh, happened uh, during that time. So it's very important that we understand uh, these truths. And uh, the Bible says he uh, reached down from on high and took hold of me. He took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my uh, disaster, but the Lord was my shepherd. Now suddenly he goes to the description of his enemy and uh, he says that from, from on high he took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. Precious people of God, God reached down on you. If God has reached down on you, you have to uh, love the Lord and bless his name. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. Because the Lord is our support, we are still alive. Because the Lord is our support, we are still on the face of the earth, praising his name. And verse 19 says, he brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. So when you delight God uh, with your praise, with your worship, with your life, deliverance is guaranteed. Let me tell you that. So make it a point to delight the Lord. You know, many a time we think that God is for our delight. That's right. In one way it's right. But uh, most importantly, we are made for delighting God. We have to make sure that we please God with our faith and sacrifices and offerings, and hospitality, a lot of things. You can please God. Uh, many people say we cannot please God by any means. That's, wrong. That's a lie. We have to please God. Hebrews 11, 6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please God. In Hebrews 13, with, uh, uh, when, we, uh, you know, when we share our good things with others, uh, these sacrifices, God is well pleased when we offer uh, help to the people of God. God is pleased with that. and It's a fragrant offering in His sight. When you walk in love, it's a fragrant offering. So all these things. So when you delight the Lord, He will definitely deliver you. And verse, uh, so uh, now if you take uh, Psalm 18, verse 1, 2, 3 is the situation, you know, the situation where Psalmist was. And 6 to uh, 15 is the uh, revelation of his power in which he is coming, his, God is responding to the situation. And then 16 I means uh, the, way in, the way in which he is responding. And verse uh, 16 onwards, the personal way in which God is saving David. So he shakes the heavens to save you. Somebody said, even if there was only one person on the planet Earth, he would have come and died for him because we are so precious to him. Now, verse 20 says, The Lord has dealt with me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. He has rewarded me. Now, Psalmist is telling about his testimony. He's very bold in telling that I have my hands are clean. I have kept the ways of the Lord. I am not guilty of turning away from my God. All his laws are before me. I have not turned away from his decrees. I have been blameless before him and I have kept myself from sin. 24. The Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. So personal testimony is very important before the Lord. Our convictions, our conscience should be clean. Precious people of God, when our conscience are clean, you can believe that our answers are, 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 are done. Many people say, uh, we do not have righteousness of our own, our righteousness are filthy rags. Yes, but God expects perfection. It's not an uh, it's not a excuse to say our righteous, our deeds are like righteous, uh, our, our righteousness is like filthy rags. Many people try that as an excuse to say that, well, uh, there is no one righteous before God and all those things. That's right. That's that's not right. Uh, we should have a personal integrity with God, and we should. Bible says, "Be ye holy, as 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 the heavenly Father, as your Father in heaven is holy." So we need to make sure that uh, we 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 personally follow the Lord, dedicatedly, our personal devotion. How? Will it be possible for you to say that the Lord has dealt with me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands, he has rewarded me. I have kept the ways of the Lord. I am not guilty of turning away from my God. All his laws are before me. What's before us? These days we have Pokemon Go, uh, Candy Crush and all those things around. When you have God's word, 
which is before you and you have all these things what is before you so make sure that his laws are before you always and some assistant in verse 23 i have been blameless before him i have kept myself from sin the lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight so he is telling my hands are clean my hands are clean precious people of god we should not hurt or harm anybody knowingly or unknowingly we should keep going in our spiritual life and then he from 25 he shows his the character of god okay that's very important to the faithful you show yourself faithful to the blameless you show yourself blameless to the pure you show yourself pure but to the devious you show yourself shrewd now do not uh, many people say god is loving he's only loving see god loves us but don't try to play your games with god don't play tricks with him don't play hide and seek many people try oh it's okay they do everything without god's will without his approval and then it's okay no it's not like that the bible says to the faithful he shows himself faithful to the blameless he shows himself blameless so as you are god shows yours he reveals himself to you to the pure if you are devious the shrewdness of god will come upon you so that's 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 quite bad okay 27 you save the he uh, humble but bring low those whose eyes are haughty our eyes should be clean our eyes should not be haughty we should not look at the things and 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 at, you know many many people we admire ourselves we admire things which we have let's not fall into that pit nebuchadnezzar says is it not the kingdom which i have so that attitude should not come our eyes should always be humble but he brings low to those whose eyes are haughty and verse 28 shows a anointing there you lord keep my lamp burning my lamp burning my lamp is the heart god keeps the fire of the anointing alive in your life wherever you are when the enemy comes against you when you have the fire of the anointing in your life when you have the light of god the word of god in your life he keeps your lamp burning and my god turns my darkness into light that's what we read here god uh, God turns uh, uh, my darkness into light. Hallelujah! He He turns it. When your light, when your heart is filled with the uh, light of God, He will turn your darkness into light. Verse twenty nine, Psalm eighteen twenty nine is really good, powerful. Take that as a promise. One of the phenomenal words of this chapter. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can scale a wall. Impossibilities are nothing when you have God on your side. You can, with your help, I can advance against the truth. With your help, I can. It's not I can't. You can advance against a troop alone, singularly. You can take on the challenges. With, with, with my God, I can scale a wall. Amazing promise. So keep that. Personalize it. With my God, with your help, I can advance against a troop. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With God, I can scale a wall. Now, verse 30 onwards, again, uh, what God does personally with David. That's very important and you should personalize that. As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. Everyone who takes refuge in the Lord will be shielded by God. For who is God besides the Lord, and who is the rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength. Every day I think on your day-to-day -day walk, you should keep telling this, especially if you are working in an office, in a secular atmosphere, in a competitive world. Say this every day. I give you a, a capsule, okay? Psalm 18, verse 30. As for God, His way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in Him. For who is God beside the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He causes me to stand on the heights. You're not going to stand on the low, low parts. You're going to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. He keeps your hand so strong. He gives strength to your hands. You make your saving help my shield. And your right hand sustains me. Your help has made me great. And God helps you. Yeah, he gives that greatness inside of you. He, give, he makes you great. 
you provide a broad path for my feet so that my ankles do not give way verse 37 because of this because of the personal interfering power of god with the personal uh, intervention of god in the psalmist life he pursued uh, because of that intervention of god in his life we see that uh, verse 37 i pursued my enemies and overtook them i did not turn back till they were destroyed so when god deals personally with you make sure that your enemies are defeated it might be spiritual enemies it might be an addiction it might be an old ha bad habit that is lingering around you but destroy it all if you are leaving any enemy alive it will come back and kill you so make sure that with the lord's help you will destroy every enemy i pursued my enemies and overtook them i did not turn back till they were destroyed i crushed them so that they could not rise they fell beneath my feet remember god said i give you power and authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions luke 10:19 to trample I do not give the enemy a high position he is gone he is in the trampled position so keep crushing him never allow him to rise up i crushed them so that they could not rise that should be our we should crush but they will not rise crush them every moment crush what is not from the lord every moment crush it crush your addictions crush your uh things that are against the lord you armed me with strength for the battle you humbled my adversaries before me verse 40 you made my enemies turn their backs in the flight and i destroyed my foes they cried for help there's no one to help save them to the lord but he did not answer i bade them as a fine as as fine as wind blown dust i trampled them like mud in the streets wow he's he's dealing with the enemy because of how god dealt with him because god strengthened him many people ask me how to come out from a uh, addiction how to come out and lead a victorious christian life only one way allow god to train your hands for war submit your life to the lord may he fill you may he train you may he infill you may he keep your lamp burning and then take on the enemies enemies will be down your feet <clears throat> and worse 43 onwards you have delivered me from the attacks of the people you have made me the head of nations people i did not know now serve me this is a picture of jesus again uh, we we serve the lord so that's a picture of there okay you delivered me from the attacks of the people people i did not know now serve me foreigners cover me as soon as they hear of me they obey me they all lose heart they come trembling from their strongholds amen at the sound of jesus every knee shall bow every tongue shall confess that jesus christ is god to the glory of god the father that's what uh, we see the image of the lord messiah here amen oh how we see jesus and how the word reveals his precious love and the last oh we are almost there we are almost completing 46 the lord lives praise be to my rock exalted be god my savior he is the god who avenges me who subdues nations under me who saves me from my enemies you exalted me above my foes from a violent man you rescued me that violent man was Saul from a violent man you rescued me therefore i will praise you lord among the nations i will sing the praises of your name 50th verse he gives his king great victories he shows unfailing love to his anointed to david and to his descendants forever if you are a descendant of david we are a descendant of david yes victory belongs to us we are not going to be on the losing side but we are going to be on the winning side praise the lord hallelujah somebody said praise the lord i don't know how many of you have come i don't know somehow uh the chats are uh hidden or i don't think so but i trust that this uh session has blessed your life amen so if you are watching by replay keep watching and keep meditating god's word psalm 18 is one of its kind never forget with our god we can scale a wall we can scale the wall of impossibilities because he trains our hands for war you can bend the bow of bronze you can keep going because when the lord comes thundering from heaven for your side 
which enemy can stand against you. Let's pray. Father, I pray that your hand will be upon your people. Strengthen them. Train our hands for war. I pray that addictions will lose its power. Every attack of the enemy will fall apart. You will give your king and your anointed ones we are kings in you, Lord, and you will give significant, great victories to us. I pray that you will continue to lead us. Every attack of the enemy, I rebuke in the name of Jesus. Psalm 18 is spiritual warfare. I pray that when it all starts with the heart of love and prayer. When we pray, you, bend, you come down from heaven. You attack with your lightning. And Lord, then you deal with us personally. To the crooked, you show yourself crooked. To the pure, you show yourself pure. To the blameless, you show yourself blameless. Help us to walk in personal integrity and in the power of our God. In the name of Jesus, encourage us this night. Encourage us to live for you. I pray wherever, whoever watch this broadcast, they will have victory in their life, O oh God. Victory in their life. Let addictions lose their grip over your people. Let the attack of the enemy Lose their grip over their people. I speak your healing and grace upon your people. In the mighty name of Jesus. Right now. Let your hand come and train us for war. You will do great and mighty things in and through our lives. We love you and we give you our praise. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. If you are being blessed. Please let me know. Info at shelterhouse.in I'm looking for the day when we complete Psalm 150 also. So tomorrow evening, I'll be taking a small session on the anointing by Facebook Live and Periscope. You can follow me then. Till then, God bless you. Have a good night or good day, wherever, whichever part you're in. God bless.